Hey, very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the 65th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. What we're looking at here is an infrared image of Hurricane Otis that went from a tropical storm to a Category 5 165 mile per hour hurricane inside a 12 hour period here between 10 a.m. It was a tropical storm by 10 p.m. that night. Um, Acapulco and adjacent areas of the Pacific coast of Mexico was under the gun of devastating wind and rain. And this is, of course, the strongest um, hurricane to ever make landfall on the Pacific coast of Mexico, I believe. And you can see the sheer devastation that this thing actually produced. If we look at this image here, this is a video off YouTube here. And I did see one comment that made reference to this not being a Cat 5, but in fact a Cat 2. I'm sorry to say this, that is not Category 2 damage, that's for sure. This is about one of the most extreme impacts I have ever witnessed in terms of images that have came through, through social media of any hurricane that I've ever seen making landfall. Now, I've been studying weather for you know, 20 plus years. I've been writing about weather. I've been doing videos about weather since 2009. And, uh, you know, there has been some very bad hurricanes in, in that time frame. But this here really is quite startling, quite remarkable, and very, very devastating indeed. Acapulco is essentially destroyed by this hurricane here. And uh, yeah, look at the sheer damage, just buildings getting completely stripped to its core. Um, really remarkable stuff, actually, when you think about this here. So here's an interesting tweet here by Vortex um, showing the following is the stats on Hurricane Otis, along with the ranking in the top five strongest landfall and storms to ever hit Mexico. So that's including both the Caribbean side as well as the Pacific side. And uh, the top landfall in Hurricane was, in fact, uh, you know, there's three contenders, actually, 175 miles an hour with Janet in 55, Anita in 77, and recently Dean in 2007. Second was Gilbert, 88, and Otis, 2023, uh, which I believe is the strongest, um, the strongest tropical system to ever hit the west coast of Mexico. And of course, generating 155 miles per hour. And then you can see third, fourth, and fifth place here. Top five strongest landfall and tropical cyclones in terms of pressure to ever hit Mexico. It was in fact the fourth strongest with 923 millibars of central pressure. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Have you ever experienced a hurricane for yourself firsthand? Not a system, you know, that was a hurricane that then made landfall in the UK and Ireland. I'm not talking about that. An actual landfall. Have you ever been in a true hurricane? I'd be curious to uh, know in the comments section below. I've always wanted to experience it, I must admit, from a kind of storm chasing perspective. Of course, I'm very conscious of the fact that these systems have uh, devastating consequences, but I've stayed up all night long in years going by. I stayed up all night for Katrina. Dean back in 2007, I actually stayed up for and watched it all night long on uh, live American TV here. Lots of things going on, of course. Um, so let's get right to the global picture. Wanted to speak about, um, of course, Otis first because of the uh, sheer devastation that has caused. There's going to be many, many years to come before that place is uh, rebuilt or remotely resembles normal interesting here this is a look at the southern hemisphere here for the month of october of course we're very 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 close to reaching the end of the month and you can see here quite interesting how the majority of antarctic is actually below average and if you look at the uh, the aao so this is the the southern hemisphere equivalent of the the arctic oscillation so this is the antarctic oscillation you can see here that we have got uh, quite a positive trend in the models here which would indicate the bundling of cold over the south pole region over the antarctic peninsula itself or the the landmass of antarctica should I say but you notice here it's been quite up and down in terms of positive and negative there's been spells where we've seen 
uh, towards the end of August and during the, the month, the middle portion of September, it was actually very negative. And that then increases the chances of colder air getting released in the parts of South America, South Africa, uh, away from the, the Antarctic region. So it's the same idea as having a firm negative uh, North Atlantic oscillation or, or Arctic oscillation. When you've got a negative AO, you release the cold out of the Arctic into the temperate regions, into the middle altitude pattern. And it's interesting how firmly positive it's going. And that would indicate to me that as we move into the month of November, there's unusual cold going to be gathering for the time of the year anyway across Antarctica here. And of course, we've had record breaking low Antarctic sea ice, uh, but we are entering the spring months uh, and even towards the summer down in the Antarctic region. Temperatures have been pretty cold actually down there for the time of the year. This is an interesting tweet here by Stefano Di Battista. And you can see here, he goes on to say here, this this guy is has got some terrific tweets here, especially with regards to uh, Antarctica here. But the, the seasonal transition from winter to summer is slow in the Antarctic Plateau. So we may see even colder conditions as that uh, Antarctic oscillation becomes firmly uh, positive here, which bundles the cold. But notice here, back on the 27th of October here, so this was in fact, couple of mornings ago at Vostok station recorded a low of minus 60.5 minimum on the uh, uh, October 28th at this particular site here um uh, Jace 2007 AWS minus 60.9 Celsius Concordia minus 61.6 uh which is pretty cold temperatures for the time of the year burn in mind we have got uh, approaching 24 hours of daylight down in this region of the world so it'll be interesting to see how cold it gets in the coming uh, week or so with if this is to believe be believed and it looks as if it is because all the models are kind of generally agreeing that we're going to go up towards a uh, two even close to three a uh, sigma above the neutral line here so we'll keep an eye on this as we go forward looking at the global picture and of course as no surprise here there is a lot of warmth stacked up quite the opposite actually taking place in the arctic region now we have seen quite a lot of uh, negative NAO and even, uh, you know, to a slightly lesser extent, a negative Arctic oscillation as well. And that tends to allow a lot of warmth up across the high latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere. But look at Antarctica versus the Arctic region here. And that can quite often be the case where you've got a cold in one pole uh, and a warmth in the other side of the planet on the, on the opposite pole here. But tremendous amounts of warmth across Russia, uh, of course, as I showed you in yesterday's video, the increase in northern hemispheric snow cover, albeit it's coming off what has been near record low levels of Eurasian snow cover for the time of the year. It'll be interesting to see over the next couple of weeks what happens with regards to the growth over Siberia, over Scandinavia, and uh, you know, and, and what takes place later down the road. Areas of cool that stand out, central Australia uh, got a few subscribers down in Australia watching these videos and the uh, you know, I try to mention Australia as much as possible to kind of include folks that aren't within the UK, Ireland, and indeed Europe. Um, let me know in the comment section below, by the way, where you're watching these videos, because if you're watching from other countries around the world, I would try to incorporate your country and talk a little bit more about the weather that's taking place or the climate situation that's taking place over your region of the world. So like I say, be sure to uh, let me know in the comment section below where you are watching these videos from and i'll try and include your country a little bit more especially on these sunday global weather reports tremendous amounts of warmth over north america as you can see here alaska eh, standing out as a colder than average october scandinavia very cool compared to average and compared to the rest of europe actually eh, parts of the eh, northern and central africa below average it's a bit of a 50 50 in terms of the continent really uh, that uh, southwest corner of uh, of China really stands out as a uh, colder than average, and that has been the theme through recent months. Uh, I wonder if that's anything to do with the amount of rain that we've seen over northern India and parts of China, I suppose, as well. But the uh, interest in the areas of cool, but there is a lot more warmth. Will this end up being the, uh, one of the warmest, if not the warmest, October on record? We'll wait and see what happens with regards to that. Uh, much of a uh, central and northern South America warmer than average. No surprise here with the El Nino, of course, present to the west. We've got below average across most of uh, Argentina, the southern uh, 
you know, regions of Brazil is slightly below average here. You can see Europe here is firmly warmer than average away from Scotland and Scandinavia, Western portions of Russia and Finland as well. We've got below average, but the rest of the continent is warmer than average here overall, which is quite interesting to see. Now, of course, I have already alluded to the fact that we are going to start to see um, colder conditions driving Arctic cold that is driving out of Canada. So Western and Central Canada, we've got a bit of an Arctic outbreak taking place at the moment. This if we're going to continue to see that drill into the United States. And as a consequence, we've seen some very, very cold conditions across parts of Western United States for the time of the year. Burn in mind, we're still in October, but the parts of the West, Peter sinks high up. It's a, a shallow uh, area where cold is, uh, you know, very, very prominent here in clear conditions, light winds, the temperature collects in these kind of high uh, sinks, uh, you know, to the east of uh, Salt Lake City. We've seen temperatures down to minus 17 Fahrenheit at Peter Sinks, minus 21.8 Celsius at Bow Valley in Alberta. And we've also got minus 20.5 Celsius at Punzi Mountain in British Columbia. But that uh, minus 27.2 at uh, Peter Sinks in Utah really stands out. We've also seen as much as 12 centimetres of snowfall in uh, Winnipeg and uh, Manitoba. Minus 1.4 Celsius at Vancouver, seventh coldest minimum temperature for so early in the season but also in stark contrast to that we've had some remarkable warmth in parts of eastern canada where 24.6 was recorded at windsor ontario for example so big contrast if we look at this chart here in particular we've got massive contrast between uh, the cold over uh, you know the northern uh, northern rocky states uh, into the northern plain states here very very cold conditions near 50 celsius below average in this region of the world montana north dakota south dakota down into kansas even oklahoma even north texas we've had below average temperatures here but they uh, notice here the amount of warmth to the east we've got a storm system that's been bringing all the snow across that central uh, sway of the united states here colder driving south behind the system but also warm humid tropical Caribbean origin air has been lifting northwards ahead of the system and reaching the mid 20s all the way up in the southern portions of Ontario and Quebec, even the, into the uh, the maritime provinces of Canada here. Look at the amount of warmth across the Arctic region, across Alaska. As that uh, blocking takes place over the North Pacific, that positive PNA signal, we're then driving the cold air south. But that cold should continue to drive south and eastwards here look at the amount of warmth over greenland with a negative nao pattern and then of course the cold over scandinavia versus the southern half of europe we've got this stark contrast between north and south over the continent at the moment moving east to the eastern hemisphere and parts of china has been seeing some record heat in recent times it's a tweet here by extreme temperatures around the world maximiliano herrera uh, Beijing rose to 27. Now, bear in mind, uh, Beijing is in the northeast corner of China, so it's quite far north here. The temperature is as high as 27.5. It's the latest 25, 26, and 27 Celsius at this time of year on record, 30 Celsius in northern China. So very, very warm conditions for the time of the year here. Speaking of that contrast across uh, Canada and the United States as well, this is a tweet here by Thierry Goose here. A friend of his sent uh, these images of the 20 centimetres of snow in the uh, town of Erdry, just north of Calgary, Alberta. The temperature of minus 11 Celsius this morning. So beautiful scenes here from just north of the Calgary area where the, the city itself also received its first snow of the season uh, around this time frame as well. Going further south to South America, and of course the heat is the big story at the moment. Ongoing remarkable heat wave. Bolivia, 46.3 Celsius at Villamontes, which is 0 0.4 Celsius from the all-time uh, Bolivian record, which is pretty remarkable stuff, actually. Finally, I've also made mention of the potential sudden stratospheric warming off the ACMWF. This is the latest model run. Look at the cold coming down over North America at the moment. But as we play through week by week here, you can see the strong warming are starting off over Siberia and then encompassing the entire Northern Hemisphere by the time we reach uh, early and mid-December. 
Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Be sure to like, share and subscribe and I'll be back again tomorrow with more. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.